I'm willing to come and beat you on your platform and show everybody, show the world that you have nothing for me. Yeah, the Schmo knows a thing or two about people ducking, but we digress. Let's move on. Let's- Come on, Schmo, don't do it to my guy. No, we're. we're, uh- we're, we're, we're- this is the Schmo with the pro, with the future Hall of Famer, the only one in UFC history to be a champ champ in the light heavyweight and heavyweight division. DC, Daniel Cormier in the flesh, the eve of UFC 257. How we doing? I love it. Every single time you start talking like that, it's the biggest smile on my face. I absolutely love this, and I feel good. I'm excited. A bit tired after a long week, but um, excited about the fight tomorrow. You're a man who deserves the hype. Now talk to me for a second. We have to start off like this. The Schmo's been anticipating what it's going to be. What are you whipping out? What's the suit going to look like tomorrow evening? I've got a beautiful black suit with some a white shirt, black buttons. Let me tell you something. You go to the top shelf whenever McGregor fights, right? You have to get one of your nicer suits. And I've got a fantastic, beautifully made custom suit uh, for tomorrow night. And, um... I can't wait to wear it. I can't wait to whip it out and see and take in the show, honestly, because it's not even about us. It's about the athletes, and you get to witness one of the greatest athletes the UFC's ever seen in terms of promotion, accomplishments, charisma, character, star power, back in the octagon against a deserving, hungry Dustin Poirier looking to exact some revenge for what happened six years ago. It's a fantastic night. With that said, the Wayans are in, the Starons are in, the Schmo knows, you had the fighter meetings. What do you look at in those fighter meetings, and what do you look at in the stare downs? Mm-hmm. Does one have the edge over the other at this point in time on the eve of fight night? I, I think what I took from the stare down was, or the, the th- ceremonial weigh-in, which we actually had for the first time in forever, right? Yeah. People are in the arena watching guys weigh in. That was the most comfortable Dustin Poirier has seemed all week, right? Because in the press conference, he seemed fidgety. Maybe it could have been the weight cut. Um, I I spoke about talking to him last week, and he seemed fidgety. had a lot of questions he needed to sift through before we got to fight night. But at the weigh-ins, he seemed confident, big, strong. And Conor looks like Conor looks, right? Looks so calm and collected. And, like, he just belongs in this spotlight. He belongs in this moment where he's on the verge of doing something that we've all come to uh, appreciate him doing, putting on great performances and fighting a guy in Dustin who seems primed and ready to uh, make this a great competitive fight. I can't wait. It's not a Conor McGregor fight week without a lot of extra hoopla involved. Altman Azaitar, man. He just got cut from the UFC. What went down last night? Man, he got a friend sneaking in, throwing in a bag. He's scaling four balconies. Dana just cut him a few hours ago. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. I had no idea. I've been in my room playing video games. And I find out that that Atman Azatar, who is a fantastic prospect, was under is undefeated. 13-0. Yeah, on the way to fighting against a in a very tough fight uh he had this weekend. Um, was going to get challenged in every facet of mixed martial arts does something like this. And I have no idea what prompts an athlete to do anything that seems so outlandish, something that is definitely going to get you sanctions. And obviously he got the ultimate sanction getting cut from the UFC. Uh, He's a young guy, you know, and this is going to have to be a learning lesson for this young man. And hopefully at some point he understands the errors of his ways and can not only fight his way back to this platform but he's gonna have to build some confidence in the organization to even take a chance on him again right in terms of build some good favor and show in his behavior that he can be trusted because I mean this is a safe zone as safe as as the zone can be so for you to pull something like that you had to know that there were going to be some some danger in doing it and repercussions if you got caught yeah the schmo knows you've been playing video games but were you able to beat Max Holloway and Madden Oh, man, I lost. I lost to Max Schmo. I lost to Max, and then the dude ducked me the rest of the week. He ran away. Holloway ran away. Max Holloway, I'm waiting for you. You got one, but this was only the beginning. And you've been telling people for years, I want DC, I want DC. Well, Holloway, I'm here. I'm ready for you. So I know you got your gaming channel. The next time we lock horns, I would like it to be on your platform. I'm willing to come and beat you on your platform and show everybody, show the world that you have nothing for me. 
Yeah, the schmo knows a thing or two about people ducking, but we digress. Let's move on. Let's... Come on, schmo, don't do it to my guy. No, we're, uh... we're, we're, well, let's move on. We'll get to that maybe off camera or something like that. Let's talk about Stipe fighting Francis Ngannou yeah. a second time. It's booked. It's in March. Mm -hmm. What does Francis have to do to beat Stipe? You think Stipe's got the edge. He's beaten him. He's wrestled him. You know Francis has been working on his takedown defense. How do you see this one playing out? I know it's early. Let's get the prediction. Uh, you know, it's going to be a tough fight. You know, I think, um, you know, me and Miocic have spent the last three years fighting each other. You know, so I am very aware of who Stipe Miocic is. And I got to be honest with you. At 38 or 39, I think this may be the best version that we've ever seen of this man. He's gotten better. He's gotten faster. He's gotten more committed. He's, he's lost all this weight, and he's in better shape. His hand speed is fast, but he has not lost any of the punching power. But Francis Ngannou seems to be primed and ready to challenge Deep A at a level that he wasn't able to do the first time. Before Francis Ngannou, I was cutting weight to fight at UFC 220. Francis was cutting the heavyweight. Now he weighs in every time 250, right? So 15 pounds off. Um, so he seems as though he understands that over the course of a long fight, he needs to be smaller, leaner. And obviously he hasn't lost any punching power. Big time fight, man. Um, big moment. I'm not going to predict it. I'm probably going to end up calling the fight. Uh, and I'm not allowed to, but I'm excited. I'm excited to see if Miocic can continue to hold off these young hungry challengers because for whoever for whoever wins, Jones will be just sitting out there waiting in the wings. Yeah, we'd like to think that you got Stipe rising to the next level because he's fought you the last two times and we've seen the best Stipe because you brought the best out of him. I mean, I don't want to take credit for that. I think that him and his team prepared knowing that it was going to be tough competitions and it was. You know, and um, I put that, all that's behind me now, you know, and I get the, the honor of, I just ran into the boss and I said, I'm going down to do another interview. You know, it's it's almost 11 o'clock at night. He goes, that's why we pay you what we pay you without you getting punched in the face anymore. So go down there and get to work, you know. So now I get to watch the fights and enjoy them without getting punched anymore. And when you told the bosses with the schmo, he said, you better be two minutes early. Yeah, be, he said, be early for the schmo. The guy keeps showing your toes. Appreciate that. Let's talk about something that hasn't happened yet. The schmo's been chopping at the bit. Kobe Covington or Hey Masvidal. I don't know what the hang up is, the log jam. I have no idea. Maybe we make this the ultimate fighter. The boss man told the schmo they're targeting for that in the summer. What do you think, DC? That's a fantastic fight. I mean, that's one that has to happen. You know, I saw Jorge Masvidal tweeted something the other day about fighting in Miami. Um, they can have fans in, in Florida. Oh, man, could you imagine? Jorge, Kobe, in Florida, in front of fans after a season of the Ultimate Fighter, I think just uh, they would have to have extra security in the Ultimate Fighter building every day to ensure that these guys don't go at each other. And if you know one thing about combat sports, intense rivalries gain interest. And this is a t as intense a rivalry as they have in all the fighting right now. One of the biggest fights the UFC can make right now, especially when it's not for a championship. Absolutely. Now the schmo apologizes. Drew Brees couldn't get it done. He still brought a Super Bowl over to your yes, New Orleans. He did. He did. You know, Drew Brees um, is the greatest quarterback in New Orleans Saints history. You know, we've had some good ones. Archie Manning, obviously, uh, pops off the page right away. But Drew Brees is the greatest quarterback we've ever had. And he has, him and Sean Payton have taken us New Orleans Saints fans to a level of winning that we never could have expected. You got to remember, we were the Yanks. We wore trash bag we wore grocery bags over our heads because we were ashamed of what we had accomplished as a franchise we had one playoff win through the 90s you know we had we didn't make the playoffs till 1992 there was a long time of losing a long tradition of losing in new orleans and the moment drew Brees stepped foot in new orleans we got to winning and seven and nine seasons which before for us were considered successes we made the playoffs at eight and eight for successes they became such disappointments because every year he got his double-digit wins in the city of New Orleans, the state of Louisiana, and me as a fan, forever indebted to the the contributions that Drew Brees made to the New Orleans Saints organization. Yeah, Stephen A. Smith, look out for your job. DC doesn't just do the UFC. He does the NFL. He does it all. ESPN, you got your shining light. Can we get a final message for the Daniel Cormier fans out there worldwide? You know what? Thanks for all the appreciation, man. I love... All the support, Schmo. You know, I would not be or do any of what I do without the support of the fans and the people that watch me. Um, in my fighting career and the overwhelming amount of support I've received 
uh, for my job and the, the work that I have done on television. So I'm thankful for everyone that has taken an interest in what I do. Thankful for you guys for continuing to cover me and give me a platform to uh, do my thing. And um, it's been great. He's the pro. I'm the schmo in Abu Dhabi. We're out.